first guest today is my friend and colleague, Suzanne Powers. She's EVP, Global Strategy Officer, CPB. She is a mother of twin boys and has a very demanding work life, very demanding global travel schedule, and just a fabulous, interesting life. So welcome, Suzanne. Thank you. Happy to be here. You know, a big theme of the show has to do with balancing your life or figuring out how mm -hmm. to deal with so many different aspects of your life. You are a prime example of someone who constantly has so many things going. Tell me a little bit about your day just today before you got here. All right, it's the morning still. So this morning, it's pretty typical. I wake up every day around, I would say 5.30 or 6, and I start with Europe. And I look and see what's awaiting me in my inbox. Probably do a couple of calls, probably write a few emails, maybe crank out a deck really quick <laughs> with the guys over there, and then I wake up the kids. So I do one round of work before I get the kids going. Then I get the guys up, get them going, do lunches, breakfast, anything they need for last minute homework, um, get myself organized as well. This morning, actually, we also had a surprise birthday celebration, just to you know add that into the mix. Um, and this is before 7.15. So then I get the kids off to school, and then I start working with some of the other time zones that are getting up by then. So that would be East Coast, and then Mountain Time wakes up, and then finally the West Coast wakes up. So I just kind of roll with however the day goes, and I sliver in these pockets <laughs> for the kids along the way. They don't feel that way, by the way. <laughs> they think it's all about them. But that's part of what I try to do, is just make every different group of people that I'm working with feel like I'm focusing on them. So that, and that helps me, because it helps me focus as well. So that's a pretty typical morning for me. So. <laughs> Which is not yeah. a typical morning for most people. How do you do it then so that you feel organized and you don't feel so crazy when you are doing so many different things? Um, part of it is I really do think in slivers and mm -hmm. little um, pieces of my day, and I focus very specifically in each one. I read somewhere that you can't really multitask, that your brain actually, the way the neurological components of your brain work is that it is impossible to do two things at once. And ever since I read that, I figured out, okay, well, if that's impossible, what if I sliver out all the different pieces? So if I'm you know, focusing on Europe for that sliver, that's good, and then I move on to the next one. And it keeps me pretty sane because I also like to plan things out a little bit. Not that I'm incredibly obsessive or type A, although it's sounding like it is, <laughs> um, but it does keep me pretty focused. Um, the only thing that I'll often do while I do something out else is I'll work out or I'll go for a run. I thought you were going to say online shop. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll online shop when I'm on a super boring conference call, but don't tell any client I said that. Right. Your secret is safe with us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. Everybody else. So, but now also I know we're talking more about when you're home, but you travel a lot. Yes. And you travel a lot globally, so mm -hmm. you're constantly in different time zones. Mm -hmm. How do you find you're able to do that and keep everything on track? Is it still the same sliver method? Sliver method and also just <coughs> really, I really work my time zones. So if I'm in one market, um, I will think about what those other markets need. And I also think about my children. It sounds horrible, but as a market. So if I'm, if I'm over in Europe, I have a keen awareness of when they're going to get up and do their thing. And I'll Skype in at breakfast or I'll just give them a call on their way to school or something. So I'm still conscious of those different rotating um, time clocks, I guess. I have them memorized and ingrained somewhere. It's been about... I've been doing global about uh, nine or ten years now, so it's pretty routine for me, and it doesn't—it doesn't feel overwhelming. It just feels normal to me. And I have my little tricks, like I try not to stay in another country for more than three days because then your body adjusts too much. Like I just have little things that I kind of think about and keep in mind so that I can keep it all balanced. And some days it's not perfect. I mean, I will get super intense with a work project and realize that I've missed a whole day of calling into the kids. Um, and technology is awesome for that because they'll text me, <laughs> say like, hey mom, what's up? You know, and even that I think is enough to kind of keep it going. I also have, I'm really lucky, I have a super amicable ex-husband who lives three blocks from me and he helps me balance it all as well and we co-parent and, and share that duty. So it's really, really incredible to have a great friend helping with all of it. I have a question. You said you don't, when we were just talking before, mm -hmm. you said you really don't like the word balance. I always think that that's something to aim for. Mm -hmm. Why don't you like that word? I think the word stresses me out. It kind of makes me think it's something I have to do. 
and something else to put on my list versus when I think about, and I don't really think about how I do all this different stuff, I just kind of do it. Mm -hmm. So I, I suppose it's, a, it's an end state you try to reach, but when somebody, I, I think it's when somebody says, hey, you need a little more balance, or hey, how do you balance it? I go, oh God, I don't want to think about it that way. I just kind of want to do what feels right and kind of flow with it, and it seems to all work out. <laughs> and when it doesn't, you adjust, you know? So. Because it's constantly changing. Exactly. It's, con it's funny because I, I like that word balance, but I don't see it as sort of like a yoga word or right. something. Right. Just more like, okay, I have this and this. You're not and this in the lotus position? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> and I, in terms of trying to balance your life, I have decided that yoga would be great for me. And the few times I've done it, I absolutely hate it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's too down. It's too down. Yeah. Yeah. I need I something else. Because doing so many things, you need a break. Right. What do you do for yourself? Right. I, I run and I love running in different cities. It's been a great thing that I picked up, um, particularly when I started doing global travel. It's a great because you can, I said you can't multitask, but you kind of can. If you're running, you can prep for a presentation in your mind. You can get everything lined up for the day. You can also see a city. It's a fantastic way to see a new city that you've never been to before. Obviously you do it in a safe way, particularly if you're female alone traveling, which is me a lot. But um, it's, it's really good for my head. So I do that, I do Pilates, which um, you know really helps with all the plane rides mm -hmm. um, and keeping your back strong and stuff like that. And I just try to do little bits here and there and not put a whole lot of pressure on. But if I, if I waste a couple of days not doing something, I feel it. Mm -hmm. You know, I just have to, it's more for my head. I think than anything else. Done. What's the biggest mistake you you've made when you are trying to juggle all these things? Probably over committing. And there's a saying of "Don't boil the ocean." And I am a person who is constantly trying to boil the ocean. I look at something, uh, whether it's an opportunity in my personal life or my professional life or both, and think yeah, I can do that. And it's usually such a big thing and I don't even recognize that it's a big thing. You know, and um, I've had many, many people over the years tell me, well, that's great, but maybe you should just do a little bit of that. <laughs> Which I don't love hearing because I think that I really can do it all. And, and I actually think those people are wise and they're probably right. And um, it's a, advice I give to people. I always say to people I'm mentoring, you know, split stuff out into bite-sized chunks. Mm -hmm. And once you've accomplished one little bite-sized chunk, move on to the next one. I just don't t take that advice myself, ever. So um, I, I think I should be a little more self-actualized about that. It's, it's, it's a mistake because you get disappointed. Mm -hmm. When you really think you can boil the ocean and you don't succeed, you're disappointed or I get disappointed in myself. If somebody was starting out and they're, they're looking at your life and they're thinking, you know, I aspire to do that, but I have no idea how I would ever be able to work in kids. Right. What would you tell them? You know what, it's funny, a lot of women ask me that. Um, particularly when they've been in the industry for maybe 10 years or so. And there's, you know, getting into their early 30s, mid 30s, and they're really contemplating like they have to make that to kid or not to kid decision. Mm -hmm. um, particularly lately, I've been getting a lot of these questions and it kind of bums me out because what it tells me is they're nervous to do it. And I was one of the first women to actually have kids at my old agency, Shia Day. And um, it was scary. It was scary doing it, but what are you gonna do? You're pregnant, you're having them, what are you gonna do? Um, and so I guess my advice is not to overthink it too much and to just throw yourself into it and to realize that you will find your own rhythm. And now it's changing as well. It is, you know, I remember a time, <laughs> sounds so awful, before... Um, <laughs> the internet? Before, before no. the internet and... Um, no, but mainly before the ability to work mobily, which I couldn't do this job without that ability. You know, I, I work out of Bryant Park some days, and I shouldn't admit that, but I do. And you couldn't do that before. Um, and that made it harder to do all of this stuff. Now we have a complete blending of life and work. Like it's all one big mush pot. It's a potpourri. It is not like you work until five, you blow that Flintstone whistle and you go home and put dinner on the table. It is all one big old blob. So that's where I think it gives women a little bit more flexibility to do this stuff. I mean, the stuff I talked to you about earlier, you couldn't do that before. Yeah. You couldn't carve out 5.30 to 7, I'm going to do Europe, and then I'm going to spend an hour and a half with my kids. Like, you just couldn't do that before. Do you think that that's progress? I mean, sometimes I wrestle with the fact, you know, on the one hand, it's amazing because you can be wherever 
and be working. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, you're accountable all the time. And if our boss emails us, we're expected to get back to him pretty soon. So do you think, I mean, yeah. do you think something is lost having to be connected all the time? I did until I realized that, um, and, and I don't mean this to sound bitchy, but I, I, I realized that I'm pretty good at what I do. And I realized that I'm gonna get it done. And sometimes I'm gonna get it done at odd timing. And also sometimes you have to have your own boundaries. Mm -hmm. Like you really, really do. And you have to have the confidence to do that. And you know, I, I, when I first started working with you crazy people, <laughs> there, were, there were less boundaries because we are on all the time. We work across all these geographies very flexibly and fluidly. And what that means is you could literally be working at any hour of every day. And that's true of other companies too, but particularly with ours because it's a very open dialogue all the time. Um, and ideas are bubbling and building and you don't want to miss that. At the same time, you also have to have your own personal boundaries. Mm -hmm. I mean, I shut my stuff off. And I remember the first couple months I said to somebody, you know, just so you know, I do sleep. Like I actually do sleep and you will not hear from me for hours and hours because I sleep. <laughs> or because I'm gonna put aside having dinner with my family or I'm gonna do whatever is important to me. Because if I suck as a person and I feel off, I do not contribute the stuff that I'm good at in the best way. And I just know myself enough to know that. So I think you just, I think, yes, I think it's harder, but I think it just forces the individual to have more boundaries. And do you think that if you're more junior, you know, do you, are you okay with your people that work on your teams doing that as well? Or do you feel like they need, you have to prove yourself to a certain point and then you're able to do That's that? such a good question because as you're asking and I'm thinking like, yes, no, yes, no. <laughs> um, because some of it is, I, I do want them all to have a life. And there are, there have been a couple of uh, occurrences over the last year or so where I've said to a couple of people, you need to go on vacation and because you're not, I'm now talking to your spouse and we're gonna plan it for you. So there's that, I can help somebody have some boundaries. At the same time, if we're cranking on something and I'm doing it just as hard as they are, I expect the same in return. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a mutually beneficial relationship mm -hmm. if we're all cranking on something together. And I expect reciprocity with that. So that's where it goes like yes, and no, like I really do respect the boundaries and I respect people's time. At the same time, you know, we all have to be focused on what we're doing. So it's, it's a hard answer. Yeah. You should ask somebody who works for me. I feel bad now. <laughs> it's like the ogre. <laughs> what keeps you up at night? Sometimes I am very busy. <laughs> what I mean by that is there's, a, my brain um, has a real hard time shutting down and I'm processing stuff and thinking about it. And this is since I was a child. You know, I used to lie in bed and kind of go, this gets me to this, which gets us to this, which gets us to this. And then I'd go, okay, how did I get to that fifth thing? Let's go back to the first thing. And I, I, I string together these chains of logic as I figure stuff out. I know, I'm crazy, right? So um, I, I can have nights where I'm very busy. I'm very busy piecing together stuff and figuring it out. And I do leave a notepad next to my bed. Um, I don't use it very often, but I do leave it there just in case. Um, so I would say that's work stuff, but I would also say that, you know, some nights I'm up just thinking about, you know, what's going to be great for the kids this summer. They're at a pretty important um, crossroads, you know, they're about to go into middle school. So what's going to be really inspiring for them this summer? What can they <clears throat> learn? What can they get out of it? You know, how can we get time with family? Um, how can I mush all that together with work stuff that I want to do? So I'm figuring stuff out all the time. Um, that said, I do sleep. <laughs> so what you're talking about really is the, is the evolution of a career. And I wonder, you know, as a parting thought, if you have any thoughts about or guiding philosophies on that. Um, I mean, one thing that I really live by now is 100% complete honesty. And I know that sounds super cheesy and weird because we should all be like that, but we're in a business where we sell stuff and sometimes we make up stuff. And that is just not a great way to live, nor is it a great way to think about anything. So I really seek out very honest people, very honest situations and companies, um, places I feel that I can really stretch, but also be respected and trust the person sitting next to me. And that's huge. It's really, it cannot be undervalued. Um, so that's one thing that I think is, I call honesty is my killer app. 
and I totally believe it. The other thing that I think about a lot is finding really incredibly smart and nice people to work with. You have to spend far too much time with the people you work with. So you better, I mean, I like you. You better, you better like those people. Ditto. And you better be inspired by them. You better feel like you're skiing the moguls, you know, that you can't ski because somebody else that you're working with actually helps you do that. So I think that's a really important piece. And then I would also say, and this is a very strange thing coming from what you probably think of, you know, me as quite obsessive and slightly type A, just slightly, um, go with it. Just go with it. You know, I took my first job, didn't really know what it was about. My boss was fired two weeks later. They said, just do the best you can. I panicked for a second and went, okay, what are you going to do? And you just make it up and you kind of go with it and you create stuff and then you change it again and it's just never over. And I think that's what's fun about it. You know, so I always tell kids coming up, like, there's no formula and there's no one way and just play with stuff a little bit and be inspired and be creative about it. Um, and, and the second it's not fun, do something else. Because it's, it's way too hard of a business to not have fun doing it. And it means that you're, not, you're probably not great at it and you're probably not loving it. And that's a problem. So. I agree. Well, you are great at it. And, you know, you seem to love it. And you seem to have a great handle on things. So thank you very you're much welcome. It's been for fun. joining me today. It's been fun. Thank you. And thank you for joining me for Perspectives with Katie Kempner. We'll see you next time.